So, um, hi, hello and welcome. Today I'm going to do a little tutorial video and uh, I'd like to show you how you can do some image processing on the computer. And um, specifically I want to show you um, how you can stitch together different uh, photomicrographs, so different uh, pictures that you have taken from uh, under the microscope to get a larger and higher resolution image. Um, it's uh, basically not difficult to do, but uh, if you don't know how to do that uh, using the right panorama software, then it can be a little bit, yeah, a little bit difficult. So, um, when stitching uh, together uh, pictures, uh, you of course use a panorama software, but not every panorama software is going to work well. I've uh, tried several of them and uh, most of them actually were quite difficult to use and also did not work quite well. And uh, there are actually two reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is that some panorama software um, assumes that you're only taking a one-dimensional um, horizontal image. So you have overlapping images um, all going in one direction and then basically the software will stitch uh, together and make a bigger uh, panorama image. Well, uh, but actually in uh, photomicrographs, so what we need is we need a two-dimensional stitching. So not only horizontally, but also vertically and not every software is able to do that. And the second, I would say, uh, yeah, also a very common problem is, is that uh, many panorama programs, uh, when they make images, they assume that you have some kind of a central camera, which is kind of rotating um, um, from, uh, you basically put the camera on the tripod and then it's kind of rotating from a fixed position and then you take overlapping pictures and then the software will combine that. Um, but uh, when you take pictures uh, from under the microscope, you don't have a, a rotating camera, but it's actually a, a planar. So that means you have overlapping flat pictures. Um, and uh, some uh, software, panorama software, is not able to deal with that uh, because it assumes that you have a rotating camera and it tries to do all of the distortion corrections and uh, then it does not get that because it's an overlapping flat picture and then it tries to correct the distortion from that and then this actually causes the picture to become even more distorted. So it, it, it doesn't work, okay? Um, so, however, luckily I have uh, found a program, a free program online that I would like to show you now and uh, this works surprisingly well um, and uh, it also has another advantage, namely that you do not only have to take overlapping pictures, but you can also make a video. And uh, this uh, program is called MS ICE, MS for Microsoft Image uh, Composition Editing and uh, this is uh, the program that I highly recommend. Um, but you do need a powerful computer. Uh, but with this program, I was actually able to uh, create very large, uh, very large uh, uh, stitched uh, images. Now, why would you actually even uh, stitch images uh, together? Um, the reason is, is, is because some s uh, microscopic specimens that you would like to take a picture of um, are simply too large to be, uh, even if you have a high resolution camera, you, because of the limited field of view, you are not able to capture the whole, um, the whole specimen, okay? Um, so for example, if you have an insect uh, that you would like to uh, in, uh, display as a whole, or if you have a cross section of a plant stem, usually they're quite large, and the field of view of the camera is simply too limited. And so um, if you want to see the whole thing, you have to basically stitch the images together and then you get a very high resolution image. Um, and then you can always, of course, uh, reduce the resolution later on, but at least you have the whole specimen um, on one picture. And that is uh, actually, I would say, the, the, the main reason why um, I use, um, the, why I stitch images together. So and what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to show you now how, how to do that. And I'm going to show you two versions, uh, the, not two versions, but uh, two methods. The first method is, is by using overlapping pictures. And the second one is by making a video. And MS ICE, uh, the program, is actually the only program that I know of uh, as of now, uh, which is actually also able to deal with the videos. Okay, so that is uh, essentially what I'm going to be doing now. If you know any other uh, programs that are very useful and uh, that you like to use, um, then please uh, write this in the comment, comment section. But now let's get started. 
After downloading and installing the program and after starting it, uh, you have uh, several possibilities. You can either create a new panorama out of images, that's what I'm trying to do right now, um, or out of video, which I'm going to show you later. You can directly open the images that you would like to stitch or you can drag and drop them just like I have done now. And in this case, we're going to stitch the images of the tick. And there are six overlapping images uh, that um, I want to combine together and uh, that's uh, why I uh, am using this program because the tick is too large uh, to be um, imaged uh, to be taken a picture of right at once. Um, you can then uh, also set it to auto detect and then it will uh, auto detect the format and you click on the stitch button and it will align the images and it will compose the images and um, after a few seconds you already have the stitched uh, picture. And uh, that is basically a very fast uh, and a very, uh, yeah, very uh, quick method uh, to do that. Um, you can then um, export the image, of course, but before I do that, you, uh, I wanted to crop it because I want to reduce the image size a little bit. And uh, then I can crop it and then I can um, export uh, the images as a JPEG. And uh, you can then, of course, also adjust the quality of the JPEG. And right now I'm simply typing in a new... Uh, name, a new file name, and uh, I click save, and uh, then I have uh, the picture on disk. Yeah? So that's uh, that's finished, okay? So it was actually less than, it took less than a minute to combine the six pictures together, and then now I'm opening it, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, you can see it was combined in a seamless way, and it's not possible to see anymore uh, where the individual images are. I'm now dragging and dropping a video and in this case I would like to show you that this is actually even more practical and easier um, and this is a video of a cross-section of a sunflower and uh, this is now the video that I have made and I have uh, basically scanned the whole image uh, and filmed uh, everything and right now I'm simply tracing uh, the edges of the sunflower stem and I'm just fast forwarding the video right now that in the preview yeah um, and uh, then I also uh, yeah, filmed the central uh, central part and uh, you can see I, I did not do this in a very regular way and that's okay uh, because uh, MSI is going to pull out the individual images and is going to combine them from the video. Okay, I click stitch and now you have to be patient because uh, this is a large uh, picture and although there are many images here, um, this took uh, maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, so of course I'm going to fast forward now, uh, but uh, this is really um, a very time intensive process. So I fast forward it now. Um, and uh, then, uh, just like before, you are presented with the complete image, a little bit small, uh, but I can make it larger. Um, and uh, then I can make some additional adjustments. Okay, so there is a, a lever on the top uh, right uh, corner, um, which I'm basically I'm clicking plus and now can actually make the picture a little bit larger here. You can see that the bottom part is a little bit curved. I think this is because of the distortion of the objectives. Uh, but uh, there are various ways how you can try to correct uh, this distortion. This distortion is not very large anyway, but you, uh, I still correct it. Um, and uh, then um, what I can do is, is I can uh, then, uh, yeah, uh, click on the next uh, stage and now it is actually making uh, the pan panorama and now I can crop uh, the image again. And this is what I'm going to do now because it is a very large image and I of course want to reduce the file size a little bit. Um, so over 10,000 pixels uh, wide, is that's a quite a large one. So I'm uh, taking away everything that is not needed. So because this is, uh, I'm going to have to edit this away anyway later on in, the, in an image editing program, but I don't need it right now either. So I'm simply taking it away. Um, I'm, I'm cropping it away and uh, then I will um, again export the picture and uh, I can now adjust the quality of the image as, and I want to have a superb quality because I'm going to be editing it again uh, later. Um, I have to then export it. I have to type in a new file name just like before. I'm just going to save it now next uh, to the images of the tick. That is fine for right now. and. Of course you want to give it a meaningful file name and then I'm going to open it again in a picture editing program because I would like to remove uh, the black uh, corners because uh, this is something that uh, where I did not take a picture of course and uh, I've now opened it in, in Photoshop 
and you can see that I'm now coloring in the black corners in white and uh, yeah and the reason why I'm doing this is because I would like to have uh, a uniform background maybe white uh, I should have used maybe the same color as uh, the other background and not white is a little bit too bright in this case but um, uh, you'll see that uh, actually it does also work like this because I still have to do a color correction later on I'm, to, I'm going to correct the levels yeah, so I have now blocked in uh, all of these uh, colors and then I'm going to make a color adjustment I'm going to adjust the lighting I'm going to adjust the levels so here's the histogram I'm going to pull over the lever and you can see now that the background blends uh, away and yeah I can also adjust the other colors a little bit in the contrast and yeah I click um, OK and I can see while well, the background is still a little bit present here in the lower uh, right corner so I'm going to do this again and I'm going to make this a little bit more yeah, and now you can see that the background is completely white. Okay, so you can see that it's uh, quite easy to uh, to make image adjust uh, adjustments, but this is a very large, uh, very large picture, um, over ten thousand pixels wide. Yeah, so this is a uh, an original size. Yeah, so the, in original size, you can see the individual cells here of the sunflower. It is it's a very, very large in picture. Not very practical, maybe, um, if you just uh, want to use this picture uh, for publishing it on the web or maybe in a PDF or in a magazine, you don't need that high re of a resolution. Um, so it's a good idea to maybe make the picture a little bit smaller. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, of course, I want to save it. Um, I do. I want to leave the originally stitched image untouched, so I'm going to uh, save it using a different file name. And uh, yeah, that is basically now uh, still saving. It's taking several seconds to save. It's that large, and uh, I'm going to also adjust the size a little bit. And I'm just going to make it 3,000 pixels wide. Yeah, and then it's uh, smaller, of course, and it takes less disk space. But I always keep my original files anyway. So in case uh, I want to do some other editing steps. Yeah. So that's it. Okay, well, uh, before I say goodbye to you, I would simply give you some final advice. Um, make sure that when you take uh, the video or the overlapping images, set the camera to manual. Um, otherwise, there is the possibility that the camera tries to adjust the exposure depending on the brightness of the image. And this can then result in some parts of the image becoming uh, overexposed or other parts becoming underexposed because the camera will always keep on adjusting uh, the different exposures for the different pictures. So set it to manual um, and then everything should be uh, should be fine. Um, and uh, yeah, this was uh, pretty much it. Um, I wish you a nice day as always and uh, happy micro hunting. Bye bye.